This is a Perspective Advanced Tutorial, the Engine Hoist Tutorial. In this tutorial, you will need to rig the engine hoist to have a working piston joint, as you can see here. This is the finished setup included with the tutorial, and we're going to switch over to the exercise scene for now. Okay, this is the exercise scene, and in here you can find all the game objects needed for this tutorial, as well as the explanation on what to do in this tutorial. As I already said, you will need to rig an engine hoist with a kinematic setup. In order to complete the tutorial, you will need to create a kinematics controller, add a wheel joint to the arm, add a wheel joint to the piston tube, add a bar linkage solver to the piston rod and create a triangle with both wheel joints, and then lastly add a gyroscopic joint to the hook to have it follow gravity. So let's begin with the first step is, as always, create a kinematics controller. I'll do this this time by right mouse button, right mouse button clicking in the hierarchy and add kinematics controller. And let's drag the engine hoist in here. So that's step one. Then add a wheel joint to the arm. The arm is this game object. We want to have it rotate over its axis, which is this uh, bolt here. So let's add a wheel joint. Um, add kinematics, wheel joint. Okay, and we can see that the plane of the wheel joint is uh, correct right away, but let's bring the radius down to, well, let's say 0.1. That's okay for now, and then let's enforce it outside play mode so that it's enforced. Okay, that's good. So that's the wheel joint done. Then uh, on the arm at least, then add a wheel joint to the piston tube and the piston tube is uh, the uh, tube part of the piston uh, the tube or sorry the piston uh, consists of a tube and a rod and the tube needs to have a wheel joint so we're going to add a wheel joint add kinematics wheel joint and let's set this up and we can see that this plane is also set up correctly so let's bring this radius down as well and enforce it outside play mode and as we can see okay that's set up correctly as well then uh, add a bar linkage solver to the piston rod and create a triangle with both wheel joints and this is where things get a little bit more complicated add a bar linkage solver to the uh, to the piston rod and the bar linkage solver always needs to go on the prismatic component of the piston setup. In this case, it's the piston rod, since this is the component that makes uh, the prismatic uh, movement, uh, so to say. Um, and let's add the bar linkage solver to this. And the bar linkage solver is explained in this piece of information, as well as its own documentation, which you can find by clicking this button. Let's add it to the piston rod, select it, and then go to mechanics, add kinematics, and then the bar linkage solver, and it will add the bar linkage solver component to this game object. Then we uh, need it to create a triangle with both wheel joints. To add a triangle, here, click the button add triangle. And the triangle uh, uh, is needed to link wheel joints with the prismatic joints uh, to perform uh, triangle cal calculations and uh, determining how each game object should be rotated within the scene. So we've added a triangle, let's open this up and the moving pivot is always the piston rod uh, itself, this component itself. Then we need to assign a wheel joint as the fixed pivot and we need to assign a hinge point, a wheel joint as a hinge point. Uh, the hinge point, uh, no, let's start with the fixed pivot, is the uh, pivot point of the piston tube. That's the part that rotates um, the piston rod along with it. So that's the piston tube. So let's drag the piston tube in the fixed pivot. And you'll see a label popping up here um, saying that this is now the fixed pivot. The hinge point is, in this case, the other wheel joint, that's this uh, fix, oh, sorry, hinge point over here, and that's the arm, so let's drag the wheel joint in there, and it will now draw a triangle gizmo. These triangles have three 
distinctive sides or legs to them and these draw gizmos to indicate what kind of leg it is. This gizmo indicates that this is a fixed static length leg, meaning that, that this leg doesn't move relative to the system. Uh, it's static and its uh, length is also fixed. This leg here on top is a um, fixed length rotating arm. That means that it's of a fixed length, but it can rotate around the hinge point. And the third leg is the dotted line, which means it's a prismatic length and it's a dynamic prismatic length. It can rotate and it can vary its length um, depending on how the prismatic joint is set up. So that's a triangle, but since this is a prismatic joint in essence, it also needs a spline. This rod needs to have a spline to know how to uh, be constrained in its movement. So we're going to add a new spline to the scene. Go to utilities, create and then spline. And it will create a new spline for us. Now I'm going to change this to the uh, shaded wireframe. And then I'm going to uh, align the spline with the piston. So I'm going to turn this one off, but I'm going to keep this one on and I'm going to align the spline on the piston rod. So um, first uh, I'm going to rename this spline. I'm going to say piston spline. Okay. I'm going to parent this under the same parent as the piston rod itself. So I'm going to parent this in here and then I'm going to align it with the piston rod first. So go to utilities alignment tool and we want to align the piston spline to the piston rod. Yeah. And let's use the transform pivots. Okay. And then align on position and rotation and align. Okay. So we can now see it has been aligned with the piston rod. It is however, uh, not uh, rotate it properly. So we're going to rotate this manually. And if I rotate this 90 degrees up as so, and then bring this down. This is now nicely aligned with the piston rod. Okay. I'm going to bring this down so it can move a little bit further, further in uh, both directions. Okay, let's re-enable this and then uh, now we have set up our spline. We only need to assign the spline to the prismatic joint or in this case the bar linkage solver. So let's drag this in and enforce it. And now the triangle should be uh, set up correctly. If it wasn't set up correctly, you should now get a notification saying that things uh, don't align properly or that there's something wrong. It doesn't. So that tells me that this should now work. And as you can see, this system now is fully operational. There is, however, the situation where you can go in too far. This is, of course, not desired behavior. So we're going to position this to its um, its limit. So let's say that this is the maximum that it can go in. Then we can now reposition, sorry, um, the spline, we can, um, kept the length and saying that this is its lower limit and point one should be repositioned to our current location. So in here, uh, similar to the prismatic joint, we can select point one and then update its point. So that's now here. So we could now never move beyond this point anymore. All right, great. Let's do the same with point two. If we go up, uh, that's, that's just a little bit too far. As you can see, the rod has come out of its tube. We don't want that. So let's drag it back in. And let's say that this is the upper limit, for example, then select two and update it. And now the piston should be set up quite nicely, as you can see. Okay, great. Then there's only one thing remaining since we have the bar linkage solver set up uh, correctly. The only thing that's left is setting up the gyroscopic joint on the hook. That's this, this game object. As you can see, if I move this around, the hook just rotates with it. 
but we want it to follow gravity. So we're going to position this in a way that it's nice uh, and straight. All right, great. And then we're going to add a gyroscopic joint to the hook. So select the hook and then go to um, mechanics, add kinematics, and then gyroscopic joint. The gyroscopic joint will ask you to define a direction that you want to uh, remain constant. And in this case, we want the up direction to be constant since we follow gravity. Up should remain up and down should remain down. So this is already okay, let's enforce this. And if I now move the triangle, we should now see that the hook stays in line with gravity, as you can see here. And that's the whole uh, engine hoist tutorial. We have created a kinematic setup for the bar linkage solver, which solves this triangle calculation and makes sure this piston joint works as intended and we have set up a gyroscopic joint for the hook so that we could keep the up direction constant i hope you have learned something from this tutorial if you would like to do this tutorial yourself you can find the download in the documentation